welcome back to the Bloom After Dark Visual Podcast. We're officially on our third episode and I'm really, really, really excited because I honestly didn't intend for this to go this far. (laughs) The first episode that I made was really just something, it was a case that I saw on YouTube and I thought it would be fun to like cover it so I could add my own spin onto it. But the fact that I'm about to do this third episode is like, I don't know, it's mind blowing because I don't really stick to stuff like that. As always, thank you guys so much for supporting my channel and supporting this little series that I'm doing. If you're not interested in watching these videos, you can go ahead and check out some of my other videos that are on my channel. I'm also about to start a vlog series of me living abroad as a foreign exchange student living in a different country. So I hope you guys check that out and look out for those. Those will be weekly. I will actually be consistent with that for once. But So yeah, go ahead and look at what else I have to offer. If you're only solely here to watch the Bloom After Dark visual podcast, I have a playlist on my channel. If you go to where it says playlist, click that and there's a whole playlist there for you and the videos are in order. Each episode has a number on it so you can figure out which number you're watching and go ahead, watch them out of order, in order, whatever you want to do. Just thank you so much for supporting. If you want to keep up with this podcast, you can always check my community tab where I post little updates about what I'm working on. Remember to check the description box below for any products that I use in this video to record if you would like to start your own podcast on the go and also for any additional information regarding this case, any articles that I use or any places that I found interesting facts that I use for this video. So let's get into it. Today we will be reviewing the wife swap murders. As usual, before I put anything graphic on the screen or say anything that I think is too graphic or might be triggering to some people, I will always put a warning on the screen and give a verbal warning. And it's up to you to really decide whether or not you can deal with that. If you think it might upset you, just exit out of the video or you can go ahead and go in the description box and maybe skip over to something that may be a little easy for you to hear. But it's really up to you to figure out whether or not you can deal with it. So please watch and listen to this podcast responsibly. In 2004, ABC Network released the first episode of Wife Swap. Wife Swap is an American TV show where two families from the United States will switch wives and moms for a two-week program. So let's say we have a family from Florida and a family from Indiana. The mom from Indiana would go down to Florida and the mom from Florida would go down to Indiana or up to Indiana and live as each other for the first week. And then the second week, they would switch the rules more according to them. And it was basically just like a social experiment. And it was like one of those shows that you just can't take your eyes away from. Like, it's created so many memes. There's so many, like, notable characters that people have watched on there that are, like, I constantly find myself Googling, like, people from that show. Like, what happened to them now? Because their family was just so, 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 so crazy. And while the original version of Wife Swap is no longer on air, there have been a couple spinoffs of Wife Swap. And there's some that are currently on, like, Paramount Plus that are as recent as, like, I don't know, 2022, 2021. There was even a celebrity Wife Swap version where celebrities would swap wives. So it was just a really big show. Even though some of the hype died down around the original show, It was reignited in 2017 when it was revealed that a contestant was murdered by her son, who also murdered his younger brother. On April 23rd, 2008, the fourth season of Wife Swap premiered episode 14, featuring the Stockdale and the Tonkovic family. So I'm not going to bring up the Tonkovic family in this episode because it really doesn't concern them, but I am going to be bringing up the mother, Lori. So Lori was the Tonkovic mother, Lori Tonkovic, she switched with Catherine Stockdale. So Catherine is the woman who was murdered by her son. Lori is the woman who switched wives or mom swapped with Catherine. So just remember those details because it can get a little confusing sometimes. And I tend to give a little more information than I have to. So just bear with me. But um, when Lori switched with Catherine and she changed the rules, you can kind of see how it affected the boys, the younger two boys, um, one of which was murdered and the other one was the murderer. So I just want you guys to pay attention when I put those clips in to see how they reacted to the swap. The Stockdale family was from Ohio and consisted of six members, a mother, a father, and then four boys. At the time of the show's airing, the oldest son, Calvin, was 19. The second oldest son, Charles, was 16. 
Jacob, who would later on be the murderer, was 15 and James was 11. In the beginning of each episode, the mother who will be swapping and the spouse are able to explain a little bit about the mother and the family and how the family operates. And during the episode, the father, who is Tim, and the mother, who is Catherine, explained that they wanted to get back to a more original way of living, and that is why they moved to a farm. They did not always live on a farm. They actually lived in a city in Ohio, and during the episode, I'm not sure if they explained which city it was, but honestly, I'm assuming that it was Cleveland, but I really don't know. But um, the family moved to the farm because they wanted to keep their sons away from some of the bad influences and some of the things that were going on in the city, like drugs and crime. And so that's why they decided to move to the farm. And they actually said that when they were moving, they heard gunshots and they knew that they had made the right decision to move to the farm. His husband Tim moved from the city to rural Ohio in isolation in order to shelter and protect their sons. We moved out to the farm to develop wholesome values in our children. The day we moved, we heard gunshots in our neighborhood, and I knew we had made the right decision. And after I heard that, I kind of got chills because it was like they moved away to give their sons a better life and to keep them away from crime, but isolating them is like ultimately what made their son snap. After moving to the farm, the children lived very simply. They had chores, they took care of the animals and like different work around the house and around the farm. And it was actually featured in the episode that their mother, Catherine, had a point system. And basically, it was like they can earn tokens and things for completing their chores and completing them correctly. The boys are also homeschooled in order to control their influences. It's important we have control over their character and their education. In order to earn privileges, the boys must gain tokens by completing a chore they must then check off on a chart. It also addresses attitudes. Just because the job is done does not mean it's necessarily done in the right way. The boys pay 20 tokens to listen to a radio show. That's important to instill in our children that you need to work and not... So the children really didn't have any of the normal things that, you know, other people consider normal for children to have, like video games or TV. Um, the most, like, childlike thing, I guess, that was featured in the episode that the kids had was a radio. And they actually had to pay some of their points and some of their tokens to even listen to the radio. And I think it was, like, 20 points to listen to the radio in general. And the mom actually picked the station for them and things like that. The episode also featured the Stockdale family's band. So the band consisted of their father, Tim, and all four sons, Calvin, Charles, James, and Jacob. This band only played bluegrass music, and each son played an instrument as well as sang together along with their father. Catherine, the mother, was not a part of the band. She actually was the one who took care of the finances and booked them gigs and things like that. So they all worked together as a family to make this band. And on the episode, they really presented as, even though they were very, like, different they were just a very beautiful family and they all seemed like they got along well and so it was just very shocking to see what happened later on another rule on the show of wife swap is that each mother has to leave the other mother a manual to read and i'm about to play you a clip of Catherine and lori reading each other's manuals and just judging each other but lori actually broke down crying when reading Catherine's manual for the boys because she felt like the boys weren't being allowed to be children and she just really felt like they weren't allowed to open up and do the things that they wanted to do. And it actually corresponds with her statement that she made later on when talking about the murder. For the first week, the wives must live by the rules of their new family. Each wife has written a manual as a guide to the running of their home. We're raising our children on a diet of wholesome activities. I don't want to raise children that are sheltered. They're not learning about life. Hmm. We're not just a family, we're a band. Our children are being raised away from language, smoking, drugs, rap music, OG. Our son Paul is a rapper known as T. Vic. Yeah. Video games, TV, and dating are all banded from this house. They have hormones whether they want to believe it or not. Our kids' partners also live with us. The sanctity of marriage is not a value. The boys collect tokens 
by doing chores to exchange for things that they want. You know, this is like they're slaves. None of the kids have jobs. If anyone needs money, they know to come to me. Sounds like we've got adults mooching off of this household. Our boys know what they're supposed to be doing from sunup to sundown. This is sad to me. Kids need to laugh and have fun. Next, the